<laughs> okay, uh, hi everyone. So I'm just uh, I'm gonna give a talk on like contributing to Ruby on Rails. So I kind of name it for beginners because I consider myself a beginner. So if I say anything wrong, I will just to say I'm a, I will just excuse that I'm a beginner to sort of excuse myself in a sense. Uh, so my name is Bosia. Yeah? Uh, this is my actually GitHub handle. I don't use Twitter. I, I just couldn't see the point of it. Uh, so a year, uh, just two months ago, I guess I was um, I was doing a year-long internship at this company called Love with Food in um, uh, in Silicon Valley. So I picked up Ruby and Ruby on Rails then. So that was I'm, I have sort of a funny experience in programming in general. I'm a mechanical engi engineer by uh, in NUS. So that's my experience. Okay, so I just put on braces a month ago, so if I sound really weird to you, please excuse me, it's just the braces. And uh, I tend to speak really fast when I'm nervous, so if you see me like speaking faster and faster, then that means I'm getting really nervous, and feel free to stop me if I'm doing that and you can't understand what I'm saying. The technology is failing. Okay. So this, uh, this is going to be a slightly technical talk. Uh, back in August, I gave sort of a technical talk. I did like live coding there, was like a, I broke some some coffee rooms or something. So I'm just uh, slightly technical because I'm just going to show you code and uh, not explain that. Uh, so feel free to stop me anytime and ask me any questions. Just raise your hand and I'll... Uh, I, I don't think it will break my flow because my slides are in like chunks. So I'll start off with a bit of like my experience as a Google Summer of Code student. So I, I applied when I had about a year of Ruby and Ruby on Rails experience. Uh, it was quite a leap for me, but what I wanted at a point in time was really to learn uh, about Rails itself. So everyone says like Rails has a lot of magic for you, but then uh, to me I feel like to really understand the tool that you're using, Ruby and Rails in general, like you can't really treat it as magic uh, for the rest of your life. So I really wanted to dive into it. So I applied. Uh, what I did was I actually started like contributing patches based on the list of projects. So I just started contributing to some of it and then, um, but then the, the project that I was contributing patches to, I didn't get it. They like, they preferred someone else. But then uh, I, I was like, yeah, I was offered to work on, uh, work on another project, the, the ones that were left. So I just randomly picked one that seems like the easiest because I'm a beginner. So I picked like unifying controller and integration test. So at that point of time, what I thought I was going, getting myself into was just making all the internal tests in Rails, uh, all the controller tests, uh, become, just map it to integration tests. So the internal test case will no, no longer um, have controller tests and everything will just run through a mock request of integration tests. So when I when I actually started, I I didn't know what I was doing, because when when I met my mentor, uh, I mean I did a hangout with him for the first time. He sort of explained to me like new new performance benchmarking of controller integration tests. And then you're supposed to deprecate controller tests. So one of the things I think DH uh, spoke about it like don't write controller tests and just just do integration tests. So that was sort of my job for for Rails itself. So I have no idea what I'm doing, but I think at the end of it, no, not knowing what you're doing is actually a good thing because it actually forces me to learn a lot, like to read, uh, I learned about how to, I got to read, force myself to go and learn about how to uh, benchmark stuff in, in Rails itself. And why I wanted to give this talk was really, I think I watched the anti keynote by Aaron Patterson, uh, RubyConf uh, 2014. Like I was talking about how um, he wanted to make Rails better so that more people can use Ruby and like have jobs with it. So I thought of, because I'm a mechanical engineer and I went to Silicon Valley, and I so I, I want to become a software developer, and, and I think Rails can give me that opportunity. So in, in order to sort of ensure that I have a career next time when I graduate, so I, I want to make Rails better. So that's sort of uh, why, why, why I want to give this talk and we hope more people will uh, contribute to Rails. So um, one of the things is that reading Rails, like looking through the source code actually makes you, uh, forces you to learn. Like if you read through Rails, it's a lot about meta programming in Ruby. But at the time when I, when I picked, applied for some of code, I, I didn't even know meta programming. I mean, I didn't know Ruby well or I've not read any books on meta programming. So like when I wanted to start on it, uh, I really had to read like the whole book on meta programming in Ruby so that I could understand what was going on in the Rails code. Uh, but, but then I think this applies to any like open source code in general. You just read libraries, open source libraries, it will make you learn. So um, one of the questions is like, if Rails is such a large code base, like how can you start contributing to it? So the simplest one is just a CI skip docs. So just read through the documents, look for errors, spelling mistakes, and just fix it. I mean, it's still contributing. It makes it easier for the rest, other people to read it. So like, uh, this is just an example. Like uh, one of the method was test hit params as thing. So just add the R in and then submit it and you get uh, one commit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the next one was even simpler. Just remove code from Rails. Just look for stuff like, like this. So 
Rails itself is a pretty large code base, so as many developers contribute patches to it, you realize that it's not perfect, there's a lot of bugs in it. So for instance, this was just a parameter that was uh, no longer used, like you, you can't look uh, in the method itself, app is not used anywhere. So there was no need, and you just remove it. So there were other instances, you know, like require mini tests. I think there was one I just, oh, you don't need it because another file was requiring it. I removed it, and then someone reported a bug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a bug. Because like, if, you, if you open up the console and you type rails, like you'll throw the error that mini test is not there. So don't, don't, don't remove code <laughs> like randomly, like what I did. Uh, so the next one was um, improved performance. Uh, I'll just give like this example. So while, while, while I was reading through like uh, how a GET request sort of worked, like because I was benchmarking like uh, a, a GET request in integration test versus a GET in controller test. So I, I realized that in, in your actual request, this, this is the router, so it's trying to find the routes. Previously what it was doing was that, uh, so you look at the method GET routes as hits. So what it was actually doing was, it was taking all the GET routes and then creating new um, uh, routes, uh, route object for them, and then setting the request method to hit. So it's like you're doing it for every single request, like post, whatever, it's gonna like, do the same thing. So my simplest, simple fix was just, unless it's a hit request, you don't do that. But then the, the, I mean, the patch got accepted, but then the thing was, it wasn't still very efficient. I mean, it, it, you get about 3% here, like uh, from 90, uh, <coughs> get about, okay, so 90 iterations per 100 milliseconds to about 93, it's like 3% sort of. So, but what, eventually what I did was, after patch drops, after I looked at it again, I realized all I had to do was, I would just match it against the gate routes, if there's no match, because I mean someone might have a gate route in their, in their route style, if there's no match, just set the request method to get, and then match against the get request, because essentially, I mean, a hit, a hit request is just a get request without the body. And they do that. So this actually got it about 7% faster. I mean, if you, I'm just benchmarking a simple get request. Uh, hello, world, yes, but it's about 7% faster in a sense. So, so that's a, an example of a like, performance improvement thing that uh, you can, you can uh, look at. So I'm gonna just, I, I include this because I thought people might get bored, so I <laughs> added the cat. It's falling asleep. Okay, so while I was working on Rails, I realized there were some tools that I had I that helped me like uh, understand the real code better. So one is Ruby Prof. I'm not sure like how many of you have heard of it. It's, I think it's sort of a profiler tool. But what I use it for was actually to do something like this. So let's say assuming I didn't know what get uh, get slash users actually does. If you do like you just wrap. I mean just read the Ruby uh, Prof gem. Just do you wrap the sort of whatever you want to understand between the the Ruby Prof code. Oh crap. Okay, so what it essentially gives you is that it'll give you a whole trace of what actually goes on in, in the method itself. So if you go through the get, you'll see it'll, it'll hit the integration get, and then you'll go to a rec session, and then you'll process the session, you hit your Rails middleware, and so I, I would, uh, I mean, if you guys are interested, I'll show you later how the sort of, uh, it, it's a HTML file, so you can just click and go through each step of, the, of what's happening uh, along the way. So this is gonna fail too, because I think the next one, yeah. So I was, I was trying to demonstrate like if you don't know what user.all did, just wrap it around with prof and then you'll, it's supposed to give you the HTML table. Okay, so that's that. And next one is PyBug. I mean, everyone uses PyBug. I mean, now you generate a new Rails app, it comes with PyBug. But then I think what's important here, that what I realized was, so this was uh, a response, uh, response written by uh, Godfrey Chan. He's one of the newest uh, sort of Rails core. So he was, um, Replying this question to a, to a guy on uh, Y Combinator Hacker News, uh, the forum. Like, if Rails is so big, like, how do I get around, uh, understand it? So I think by now you all have, like, sort of uh, read what, what I was trying to say. So this is an, uh, uh, sort of section that I took out. So basically what I did, uh, what I do now is like, if you have no idea what the code is going, uh, is doing, just put like five bucks here, then you just type like what the variable is, and then put five bucks after a certain method and see what's, what the output is. So essentially you don't really have to, uh, you can see like each step of the way, like what the code is actually doing. So I think this is really uh, helpful. So if you want to read the full post, I'll post the slides up, and then you can just uh, click on the links. So I was talking to another uh, one of my friends who was a Rails developer as well. I was talking, uh, was just asking me about my Rails sum of code. Like, if you don't have a point, if you don't know where to start, it's really hard to start in, in 
contributing to Rails. Uh, I, I, if I didn't have Google Sum of Code, I wouldn't know like what patches to submit and everything. Uh, so one good way is, I mean, if this is this more like if you have no idea how to even submit a patch, you just go and uh, you just read this uh, blog post. It's basically about telling you uh, what expectations to have. Like there's only uh, I think I don't know the number, but there's a limited uh, core team members, so the number of people that can review and accept patches are pretty low. So it it would, it would take some time uh, for that to happen. So even if that happens, uh, you can just wait for it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was the blog post. I think the next one is just uh, read like the contributing to Ruby on Rails, the guides uh, online, uh, the Ruby guides. So it'll give you an idea of how you can set up the environment, <laughs> what to take note of, like no cosmetic changes. Like removing a, co uh, a comma or spaces between the brackets doesn't really, uh, isn't really a patch. Okay, so the next one I think, uh, so the, the next two sort of things I'm gonna show is actually uh, the real uh, the, the summer of code projects that were in my batch, and then I realized that at the end of the summer, like the the students stopped working on it, and then I think someone should work on it. So, um, so this was the first project I was submitting patches to because, um, so the Rails internal test case are uh, now still run, uh, are uh, ran in run, are uh, still being run in uh, sorted order, so it's not random. And that's a bad thing because your your tests are depending on another on the state of another test. So that was, that's the method that uh, mini tests name it as. So. Oh crap, now my thing died. <laughs> okay, so the so the next um uh, oh, oh, this thing died. Oh, okay. Ah okay. So one of the core contributors actually renamed it. Instead of I suck and my tests are order dependent, you name <laughs> my tests are order dependent because no one sh should uh, no one should suck. <laughs> so I mean, uh, it, it's pretty easy to get started on this. Just go into any one of the I know action tag active job. Just in the abstract unit, it, it's the it's sort of like the test helper for the real internal test case. Uh, just look for the line where they set it set all the tests to run in the sorted order. Set it to random. Run the test like ten times. Uh, write it to a file and see what tests uh, are failing. Just submit a patch for it, and I'm pretty sure you get you'll get accepted. So you can yeah, you can do that, and that that will actually help you uh, in other uh, in sort of explore the Ruby code because you are actually reading text, and text is one of the best documentation for the Ruby on Rails code. So next one is uh, tests are still failing for other Ruby implementation. So if you are looking at JRuby and Rubyness, they're still failing. Uh, someone worked on it, but then there's a lot of things to consider. Like you have to go into JRuby and contribute another patch. Because it's not uh, implemented the same way as uh, MI Ruby, so this like uh, some sub starting point. That I think uh, I, at least for these two projects, I think it's a pretty good starting point for anyone who's looking to contribute to like uh, Ruby on Rails in general. Up to if you have any questions, you're free to ask. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Oh, uh, GIP. It's G I P H Y then. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I had like heap checks, heap walls in my previous company, so I'm a big fan of them. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do you share this Ruby prop? Sorry? Do you share this Ruby prop? Oh, uh, I think it's dying. Um, so it's sort of like a profiler for different outputs. So you, you can even look at object uh, allocations if you want. So, but what I was going to show was basically sort of like a, it's a stack trace of all the methods that is being called when you call methods in a sense, when you wrap it around. So it's, it, it will allow you to like sort of step through each step like uh, what's happening. So that's essentially yeah. why it's like uh, I wouldn't say, it's a, no it's not really a debugger in a sense. So it just prints out, uh, so it will even show you like the runtime of what, uh, how long each method took to run and stuff. So it's also like in a sense when you're stepping through you can, that, that was what I used to identify like hot spots when I was improving performance. Then like how, how I discovered the head routes thing was that I was doing a head quest and then the get routes thing was still like, uh, it was still taking a bit of time. So that was how like, I identified it. But uh, can you get a documentation for Ruby Pro? It's pretty simple to use. Yep. So having, <coughs> having to look through the code for Rails, 
you have an opinion of Rails now? Like, you think it's oh, good, bad? Yeah. So, <laughs> so one, one thing I have to clarify. So, Rails is really big. So, where most of my time I spent was actually just action pack. And within action pack, I looked at how tests are being, uh, are being run. So, that's sort of I know how tests are being run right now, but about an opinion of Rails, maybe not. <laughs> no, my, my Rails is still awesome. It's been awesome so far for me at least. Was a leading question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. If you think of something else, then you can uh, come find Goshan after the talk. Um, let's thank you.